Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Luke chapter 8, verse 6, Romans chapter 2, verse 3, and Leviticus chapter 8, verse 6. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for these scriptures. Lord God, give us wisdom and understanding and what you're trying to tell us in this hour. We ask you to forgive us for all of our sins and help us to be wise and walk uprightly in your ways. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Luke chapter 8, verse 6. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away, because it had no moisture. All right. And so this is actually um, speaking about the fact that when the parable of the sower, you know, was speaking about this portion, it is really pertinent to the believer, right? Because this is the case of a a fallen away um, bride or a a person who, who had chastened themselves and yet did not stand firm in faith. Right. And so um, here it says, and some fell on the rock and as it grew up. So that means that there was enough um, moisture on the rock, right. Um, That to where it could actually cause the, the plant to germinate right to take to take root and um, I'm saying germination but um it, it caused the seed to sprout and so um it 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 grew up right a little bit enough for it to be something and it says and some fell on the rock and as it grew up it withered away because it had no moisture so meaning that it was not being maintained right it was it, that word was received with joy right just like the seed and and in the parable it goes on to explain later um that this parable is is speaking of the fact that when the the word was received it was happily received it was received with joy right when we go to church we hear the word we receive it right when we hear these these teachings and devotionals and God gives us scriptures and we receive it with joy but we got to stand firm in faith right we got to maintain that seed we have to moisturize that seed we have to continue to cultivate that seed right otherwise it's going to be kind of like when you're in school and you have a test you know you, you get through that and then you you just get rid of it and that's not right because the final is coming the real test is coming right it's not just about planting as many seeds as you can it's about maintaining and cultivating the word that is inside of you right so that it can grow up and nourish and bear fruit Right. It has to get past many stages of maturity in order to get to that point of bearing fruit. And so it says, and some fell on the rock. And as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. That means they received the seed with joy. They did not have a root. It was not rooted because there was no place to to for the root to grow into because there was a rock there, right? And there's no moisture. There's nothing able to feed that thing. And so it says it, when the testing came, right, um, it, they, they did not pass the test. They fell away right? Because there was no root. And so God wants us to develop good roots. He wants us to receive the word from him and he wants us to pass the test and he wants us to, to go the extra mile, right? With that word, we need to live that word. And then when the time of testing comes, we've stood firm in faith because we have that word planted in our heart. Let's look at at Romans chapter two, verse three. Do you suppose, O oh man, you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself that you will escape the judgment of God? Hmm. 
Wow. So let, let's just look at this. It says, do you, O oh man, who judge those who practice such things? So there's judgment, right? And so God is wanting us to step back from judgment. We know that judgment, you know, is not a way that we should walk right? Judgment is for Christ. That is an appointment of Christ. That is his role. He is the judge, right? And so we we need to weigh things and look at things to see if they're good or evil. But that determination actually does not come from us. It, it comes from Holy Spirit. He will tell us um, and show us how to discern the good and the evil, right? He's going to lead us and guide us into all truth. And so he's going to show us what's good and what's bad. But that doesn't mean that when we have decided that something is bad, that we are supposed to exact judgment on a person who is doing that thing. That's not our role. That's not our job, right? If you don't want to come under judgment, you don't need to judge. If you want great mercy, you need to be greatly merciful, right? And so it says, do you suppose, oh man, you who judge those who practice such things, yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? We need to have a repentant heart. Right. We need to have a repentant heart and not a judgmental heart. Our our position should not be as one looking down upon someone, but yet a servant who's looking up to God for mercy. We are people, right? We are God's people and we're looking at him and we're pointing people to him to receive that great mercy, to receive that forgiveness of sin and not looking at each other and saying, you did this, you did that, right? And and it's easy to grumble and mumble and complain about people or a person um, if you know how they're sinning, right? And you're saying to yourself, well, if they wouldn't have done such and such and da, 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 right? And you don't realize you're doing the same thing too, right? Like we, it's hard sometimes to see your own self, right? Knowing that you, um, you sin too, right? And in your thinking, we sin in our thinking so much. And so God wants us to repent, Walk in a repentant heart as a servant. We are serving God and we are trying to stay repentant. That means our hearts need to be towards repentance and, and towards a, a sorrowful nature in when we sin right? Because we don't need to be walking around in the pride thinking that, oh, I'm forgiven. I'm walking under grace. And yet you're just sinning and sinning and sinning. And you're not, and you're looking at everybody else like, oh, y'all aren't forgiven. No, you need to repent too. We all need to repent. We need to be walking around in a state of repentance. Why do you think the book of Revelation as it's giving the churches the report cards you know, it's telling them over and over again, repent, right? Or I'm going to come upon you as a thief, repent, or I'm going to remove your lampstand, repent. He wants us to walk in repentance. That means that we have to have a mindset of um, consciousness towards our own sin, right? And not standing around judging others. God wants us to receive this word and nurture this word daily, right? He wants us to be in repentance daily. He wants us to not be judging one another daily. This is one of the easiest things that we receive with joy, right? But then we get to criticizing people in our own minds, some of us more than others. <laughs> and so, you know, God wants us to stay away from that. He wants us to see sin and love people, Right. He wants us to pray for them and pray for ourselves, too. He wants us to repent for our own sin. And, and the sins of our mind are just as ugly. Right. They just as if we did them out on the outside. It is not good. And God wants us to ask for forgiveness and not walk in judgment. 
Amen. All right, let's look at the third verse, Leviticus chapter eight, verse six. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. I love that is that's the last verse that's so beautiful that God would give us this verse because, you know, when we look at this, what do we see? We see Jesus washing us, right? This is the appointment of um, Aaron's sons into the Levitical priesthood, right? And this is Moses who is standing in to wash them, right? And to cleanse them and put their robes on, right? This is a reflection of how Christ washed us right? He cleansed us. And guess what? We are priests. We are, are uh, a chosen priesthood, a holy nation, right? Um, we are his children and, and we are the sheep of his pasture and he's keeping us clean. I said that wrong. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, but we are the priests now, right? We are a priesthood. And so, you know, we walk as the priest of the Lord in this world. We go and we do the bidding of the father, right? We are our people who introduce other people to the Lord. We speak to them about him. We, we help the ingrained grafting occur by planting the seeds right but what we don't need to be walking around doing is judging others right we need to walk in 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 forgiveness and wholeness and in looking at ourselves and our own sin not just at the sin of others and saying that they're wrong right we don't need to be pointing the finger Yes, you can see when something is sin. Yes, you can. But that does not mean that the sinner themselves is a person that you should be judging as having sinned, right? That's not our job. Judgment belongs to the Lord. And if you don't want to come under judgment for that thing that you did, don't judge them for that thing that you can see that they did right? And your circumstances and their circumstances are two totally different things. And God knows the heart of each man, right? That's not your job. You think you know, but you don't have any idea the complexity of what's going on in that situation. Leave judgment to God. Judge your own self right? Judge your own self. If you have to judge someone else, judge your own self and ask God to forgive you for what you find. Amen. And ask God to give you wisdom on how to repent and what to say when you are repenting and what the truth is behind the sin, right? Where did it come from? Ask God, he's going to reveal it to you. We need to be walking in repentance and we need to receive this word with joy and not fall away from it, right? We need to keep that in our hearts, amen? All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for showing us how to stand firm in faith, showing us how to walk in repentance, not walk in judgment. And Lord God, help us when the time of testing of this word comes, Lord God, help us to stand firm in faith. And even if we mess up, we know you're washing us. We know you're cleansing us. We know you're keeping us. We know you are presenting us faultless. Lord, help us to get up and keep going. Forgive us for our sins, Lord God, and help us to keep working and living for you as your priests. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.